Pro Playmakers. These are the skills that separate. Welcome to the Pro Playmakers video blog number 12. And today's topic is role is relative, which basically means that the role that you have on your team is relative to the players of whom are on your team, not necessarily reflective of what your capacity is on other teams or what your true capacity is in terms of your own individual skill set. And it's very important as a player not to confuse your role with your identity. So I want to talk to you a lot about what your role is and how you can play your role and be a valued member on your hockey team yet not lose your identity which is when other people come to watch you and they're going to try to project you as to whether you can play uh, at the next level that you'll be able to hold that identity and show enough of that identity that people could project you on another team in a different light and that's really what's important because the coach that has you put you in a slot based on what he has available to him but like I said, if you played on another team or you play at the next level, the configuration of that team might put you in a different role. So it's very, very important that you understand that. So let me give you an example. Let's say you, uh, you start the season with a team and the coach uh, brings you into his office and sits you down and says, okay, now this year you're going to be our checking line center. Well, of course, last year and the year before, you were, a, you were relied on as a top six player and you were relied on as a, power, as a power play guy and an offensive player. And now he has guys that are, quite frankly, better than you. And they're more proven or he believes in, you, in those two players more than he believes in you at that particular time. But that doesn't mean that you've all of a sudden lost your scoring touch or that you can't be an offensive player. It just means on his, role, on his team, he has guys with whom he thinks are better than you are and now he's slotted you in this checking role. But like I said, that doesn't mean that you are all of a sudden not an offensive player. What you now have to do is you now have to take that as a challenge and say, okay, I have to be responsible defensively because I'm in a checking role. That means I'm going to play against the other team's top lines. So i got to make sure I'm a plus player. Well, how do you become a plus player? Well, it's not, be not that you shut the other team down and you don't score yourself. In order to be a plus player, you have to be able to score goals while you're checking the other team. So what happens is, is that you have to now learn how to be able to create offense from defensive situations. Be able to create offense from being an intelligent forechecker by learning how to create steals, by learning how to be a, a, good for, a good checker in terms of your ability to knock someone off the puck and create offense from there. You're going to have to be able to be very effective in winning board battles those kinds of things or be effective on the back check so that you're creating turnovers uh, on the back check which would create transition opportunities for you so there's plenty of ways to create offense even though you're in a checking role and now if someone is watching you and maybe they've seen you for the last couple of years and they liked how you played offensively and they think you think the game really well and now they see you in this light your uh, your projection and your value as a player in that player in that scout's mind or that coach's mind is so much higher now because he said wow this guy can create offense a traditional way but he can also play on the defensive side of the puck and still create offense so those like I said it's still relative and your role is relative because the other coach the coach that you have thinks that he has two guys that are better than you but you can still be an effective offensive player and utilize those talents even though you're in a checking role. Another example is let's say that you're a defenseman and on many teams you have been in you have been a defensive defenseman so you've been relied on as primarily a penalty killer and the coach has praised you and a lot of your internal thoughts have been that I'm going to be like a shutdown guy. You've always played against the other team's top lines. Your partner has always been a guy who maybe has been a run and gun guy and you've been Mr. Safety Valve. And what happens is that all of a sudden now the the guy that you've been playing with or one of the guys who are the top two guys they go down in a long-term injury so they're now out or they get traded and the guy that's come in to replace them is now you so there's no one else to take over that role as an offensive guy so now you have to assume that role and so it's in the moments that come thereafter so those next few games after you've been promoted to this role as an offensive player, 
that you now have to start making more plays. So this is what the disconnect is with defensemen and I think it's a very important point and, and, and it's one of the, my real pet peeves. Every defenseman has to be able to make plays. If you're a defensive guy and you're just a you know a, a, a guy that likes to check, create uh, create contact, take care of your front of your net, um, push people towards the outside, be a good gap guy, and you're satisfied with that, you're going to have a big problem because there's going to be a moment at some point in your hockey where you're going to be relied on or you're going to be asked to assume more of an offensive role where you're going to have to start making plays. And so it's important that regardless of what role you're in, that you are able to make plays. That you're able to separate someone from the puck and be able to make outlet passes. That you're able to make stretch passes. That you can read the ice and play a little bit more offensive. That you can bring the puck up ice, perhaps beat the first four checker with your feet and then make a play. And that's, that doesn't even count. Uh, how many plays that you have to make at the offensive blue line where maybe you've been getting pucks here and, and in your role previously you're just satisfied with just pounding the puck back down well now in the offensive role you're playing with better players you're relied on now to try to create some offense well now you're going to have to drag the puck across the blue line and create shots so why not be a defensive player which you can be because there's guys ahead of you and relied on to be power play guys and now you can do that, but still add these other parts to your game where you're still making plays because you never know when you're going to be have that opportunity to be in an offensive role even though you're not in that now. So even though your role, your identity might be a defensive player, it's still important to be able to make plays.